Now, BBC Two witnesses the making of a television station. The pressure's mounting and the language reflects the frustration as Janet Street Porter's dream turns into a nightmare at Canary Wharf. Well, this is it, guys. 15 seconds. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> 10, 10, 9, 8, 7... On the 12th of June this year, Britain's first live 24-hour cable TV station was launched. Thank you! We're going to bring you the stars, the gossip, the stories and the views that you care about. The best thing is, we can bring them to you all day long. This is the story of Janet Street Porter's foray into the cable revolution. I just want it to work. No, I, I can't give a fuck about I how it works. I just want it to work. <laughs> when Janet Street Porter set off for Canary Wharf, her challenge was to create a new kind of TV station. Conventional TV costs over £50,000 an hour. Janet has far less. There's two ways to make television for £2,000 an hour. You can make a channel that's a bit like a jumble sale, used everybody's old leftover, clapped out, recycled programmes, or you can start from scratch and build something new. Live TV has been set up by the Mirror Group, who've moved their newspapers to Canary Wharf. The TV experiment would take place up on the 24th floor. It's the dream of David Montgomery, who was brought in by the bankers to head the Mirror Group after Robert Maxwell's death. With newspaper sales declining, he wants to get into television. And with Murdoch dominating satellite, Montgomery's starting up on cable. Now Street Porter has just over six months to make the dream come true. Until I saw the advertisement in the newspaper, the stuff I didn't know it existed. All I know is Janet Street Porter's behind it, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like going for any job, it's horrible. You get a horrible, sick feeling in your stomach, and you don't want to do it anymore, and you wish you'd never come. That sort of thing. No. I just had another argument about the fucking life. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, I said, why have, why have it all got to be wired back to the control room? Janet Street Porter's idea is to double up the offices as a studio, so shooting can be done anywhere. But as well as designing the studio and the programming, she needs to find the right people. Hi. Right, first of all, I want to apologise for getting you all in at once. I know it's not a conventional way to interview people, and if any of you don't like it, well, speak up. It's a live channel, it's driven by live events and things that are happening. It's not a hard news channel, it reacts to events of the day. But at certain times of the day, we're very live. For example, between 9 and 1 in the morning, 3 till 7 in the afternoon, and then 9 till 1 in the evening, we would have two outside broadcast units and uh, live things happening live in this space. So we could do interviews, talk shows, cookery, fashion show, whatever you want to do in this space. Now, we'll also be making features which will look like the live output, and those will be pre-recorded and dropped into our transmission. We haven't worked out all of that stuff yet. Live TV will only get £3 a year for each cable subscriber as part of their basic package, and only a million homes so far in Britain take cable. Everything has to be cut to the bone and money spent on the studio can't go on programmes. But the whole thing as well, it's also got to be completely controllable from the control room, because what you don't want is thousands of people running about, changing lights and everything like that. You want it totally controllable. No, I don't. I think that's a ridiculous no, extravagance. No, it's got to be totally... It's an office. No, it's got, no, but all the lighting needs to be totally controllable. Hang on, when I did Network 7, we didn't control the lighting from the control room. This is extravagance. It's an office. Well, how else are you going to control it? switches in the wall. Who's going to operate them? Human beings with fingers. <laughs> They're going to walk up them and press them. <laughs> and how many of these human beings are we going to have to pay for all the time? You've got a whole bloody staff working there. No, but you haven't got anybody down. I've got all these people. Right, what's this person? Now I'm going to sound like David Montgomery. You're looking at the um, editorial staff rather than technical staff. What's this? Greet me, greet me. Fine. I've got five of them. Yeah? They're receptionists. Yeah, oh, you've got 24-hour right. reception. <laughs> I mean, it's like a battle of wills. 
the only way to get what I want is to behave like a spoiled child and picking away at it and not really fitting in with that <laughs> Sure, bashing out all the air conditioning, so I would have more air conditioning. Right, well, what all those the, things like air conditioning that don't show on camera. Four floors down in the heart of the mirror, Janet has to attend the 20th floor TV executive meetings. As they've done in newspapers, they're keen to use new technology to keep staff numbers down. Well, why don't we find out where you are on the operational side, Darrell? Mm -hmm. Sure. We've um, planned for Avid, which is a um, uh, computer uh, Apple Macintosh based editing system, which is a lot quicker because um, it's not it's not linear than the old traditional style. We're also buying their tr broadcast transmission facilities, which is we're the first people in the UK to use it. So, um, <coughs> so that's um, usually bad news, isn't it? Oh, don't say that. That's uh, just what I was going to say. <laughs> actually, I think there's an upside the downside. Actually, <laughs> where, where else is it used in the world? Um, Honolulu. <laughs> 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 With conventional computer editing, you still have to complete the programs with expensive videotape machines and staff. Their idea is to use a revolutionary master computer that will do everything, including broadcast. giving everybody wants to buy in the future a sort of guided tour of our installation. <laughs> For another 10% off the price. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the sort of thing they do, though. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. they, if they let you get it cheap, because they're the first people to use it. It's like by double glazing. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. so you see adverts in the paper. The test uh, house. Test house. Yeah. Yeah. Have a free kitchen installed. And... Janet Street well, yeah, Porter yeah. has another pressure. Ex-editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie, has been brought in to oversee future TV projects and to build a network of local live TVs working with newspapers around the country. For Janet, Kelvin is an unexpected and unlikely bedfellow. She insists they both report direct to Montgomery. I mean, when you hire Janet, you get uniqueness. Live is a success. It will be solely because of Janet's brilliance. And, um, it's but there, well, it is a failure in the same way as if you're a failure and this is a hopeless, hopeless documentary, uh, then uh, things, will, uh, things will have to change. And, um, and if it's a business failure, then, uh, then, I, then I'll, be, uh, I'll be tossed out as well. But that's, that's the correct approach in business. I mean, there has to be a cutting edge. The idea is not just to be given a fat salary and a big car and you slide in every day and mumble a few well-chosen words to somebody and uh, nod sagely when the chairman says something. I mean, you, you do a day's work, and if, you, if you're not up to it, then you should pay the price. It's not the Daily Mirror on television. We don't even have to begin to talk about what it is and it isn't. I've said it's live television. I've said it's not aimed at a particular class. It's not aimed at a particular age group. It's live. No one else is doing that at the moment. That's different enough. You're watching the channel because you like the concept of the channel of live reaction to events and what's happening, not because some bird with a kind of expensive hairdo and a silk shirt suddenly going to pop up reading out the weather. As the studio progresses, the new staff arrive to work on the programme content. Yeah, it's got to be weird and wacky. It's got to be weird and wacky. Well. I mean, it's got to be things like... Um, We're going to have a sort of transvestite makeover. Um, and the, the whole concept of the sort of four-hour block is to include hard current news but dressed up in an attractive, accessible way with fun elements. I mean, we're going to do something on sort of food for seduction. So, you know, the, a really fun item. So, but remember, it's got to be recut to show you to the, like, the, yeah. the, the older like. viewers and also people like that. So I think it should have a strand in it. Janet has also completed her senior management team. Rachel Purnell, who worked with Janet in BBC Youth, is joint head of programmes, alongside Nick Ferrari, an ex-Sun newspaper man brought in by the Mirror. run down this chart? First, what about the office? Well, you and I have talked about the desk. Daryl Burton looks after the finances, now Janet is arguing for the heavy studio desks she's had designed. What are you doing, Daryl, if you're trying not to have these desks no. that we're having? I would like nice desks. I'd just like them to be practical as well. Has anyone seen the design for the desk? No. Yes, I have. 
I have to say I agree with Daryl. They're the ten big desks, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're really nice, don't get me wrong, but... <laughs> You know. Well, it's not that. It's the fact is that. Well, if we why don't stop we let them make one? Well, because we know it's pointless it's making one. Because mm. we know how it's going to look. It's going to look lovely. The problem is you can't move it. I thought that actually they weren't that thick wood. That they were splitting the wood, and that that it looked thicker from the outside than it really was. Why can't we just get them painted like wood? Oh, don't you stop. I am because I just think that if we have those desks, we have no flexibility. Well, I like those desks. I feel already beaten down by the desk problem. Move on, yeah, let's move on to staff recruitment. Mm. Right. Mm. We are now going to run at 241 staff, costing a total of 6.637 million, which is £420,000 over. So, where have the extra search one people what, come uh, from? Where are the extra? Um, the editorial. Staff is and management and sales and everything is now at 155, which was at 86. So that does mean that by the end of the year, we have to cut the staff budget by 20% to get into next year, which is the agreement we've got with the mirror management. Okay. By January 1, we have to lose 20% of our staff. The business plans are kept secret from the optimistic troops. To make the channel distinctive, Janet wants an information strip, the info bar, with words running at the bottom of the TV screen. She hasn't told you because you, she hasn't told you because she didn't want to or she's being naughty. She didn't tell you because we're working on it. Well, we've got a number of problems with it. We haven't got the machinery or the humans to do it. No, I'm not the difficulty is Janet wants her info bar to be updated continuously live. Anyway, at the minute it's set up so that the producer sits in the gallery and does the Aston's. Yeah. It's complete crap. It's not possible. Correct. Right. Yeah, you can't, you know, but you can't, because if the Aston's in use, you can't be writing in it. Yeah. Well, well, we've sent the techies off to find out about this. About More cutting-edge technology is needed. No, no, no. Okay. Because what I've done it. I promise. Really, really Janet finds time between endless meetings to teach the new presenters old tricks. How much do you refer back to the camera? Do you know what I mean? Because we've had huge things about what to, what to call the people at home, or you call them you at home, or do you call them us, or we a club or something. Well, we're not a club. Well, that's what we keep being told. Well, we're not a club. But, that's I mean, how much do you... You just call them you. Go, yeah, but do you... You wouldn't ever turn and raise your eyebrow at the camera, that's what no, I mean. No, okay. I would not. Well, you're not Ruby Wax. If you're right. world famous Ruby Works, you might, because okay. she's up, but she's only doing it to piss on the people. It's a device that she's using to say to the people at home, hey, look at this drongo who's going to yeah. agree to be interviewed by me. Right. And you're, and you're trying to say that. Quite a lot of this. What we've been talking that about Janet, really odd. is that, we're, that there's the possibility that you, 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 you might be talking to someone that, that actually involves people at home. So it's the interaction. So, I mean, it's a natural thing to look at the camera in that case. But, but, I think you just have to try it. What happens if, I don't know, some Tony Hadley say, Spando Bell, and you say, you know, you tried to make a comeback and it, and it didn't happen? And well, he's, he's never going to answer that. I can no. tell you right now, that's right. a crap question. Right. Because right. I know <laughs> Tony Hadley. You want Tony Hadley to answer a question like that? Having met him a few times, it's the softly, softly, sycophantic, easy way in for the nastier question. So you never go, hey, Tony Adley, you're trying to make a comeback. <laughs> it's like people saying to me, hey, weren't you famous once? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, fuck you. Yeah. No, I'm... Thank you. I've been invited to appear on room 113. Really? Are you going to go? I don't know what's going to be in it. Who would you um, chuck out? The list is so long, it runs to many pages. Oh shit, oh, I'm feeling very harassed. Why? Well, I've got, I've got to go to France at the beginning part of next week to can to admit the television market. I'm trying to finish writing the Channel 5 programming strategy. I'm going through a full budget review on live. Eight weeks to be there. How much does it all cost? Don't know. You I don't know. Out. I don't know the final figures. I'm sorry. I really don't. Because it breaks down into technical installation, building construction, 
and IT, you know, computers and such. So I can't really give you the final cut. At the top of my head, I don't know it. You shoot anywhere in the spot. Got fantastic views. Use those as background. It's my office on the corner. You can shoot outside it, inside it. Where's your desk going to be? I don't have a desk. I don't know what this funny little rail is here. Obviously the baby's clothes are out. Um, I'll look at a table. I don't like desks. I think there's something men invented to make women feel inferior. Secretaries sit on a lower chair on the other side. This is my hatch for communication with Philippa. The shouting hatch. We'll be moving in the first two weeks of May. With just five weeks to go, Electricians move in to complete the final fit out. But rehearsals have to begin regardless. I think, yeah, having heard the others, yeah, I think it'll do quite well because it's very different and uh, it stands out because it's a very Irish in feel. It's very nice. We'll hear it in a minute. Lots of things going on in the world right now. Let's get the headlines with Imogen. Imogen, Imogen, Imogen. The idea is the news will be like an informal chat. Terrible virus coming from Zaire. Yeah, well, if you've actually seen here, there's a photograph here in, in, the, in, the, in the Daily Mail, um, and you can actually see people all here all covered up. It looks absolutely terrifying, but hopefully, we'll get some more updates on that a bit later on. Downstairs, it's time for the weekly Mirror TV executive meeting. Was it too thorough, was it? I thought I was a bit. His introduction went really well. James wrapped over his to me. It's all gone too well. It's too politically correct. And suddenly he made the inevitable remark about me and breathed a sigh of relief. I'm sure you Got a revenge after you left, though, Kelvin. Yeah, we showed in the green room and we said it was your padded cell. <laughs> you especially designed it. Have you? Just a rehearsal. <laughs> And you'll be outputting a station basically by the end of May. Oh yeah. Uh, These are outputting, but you'll be you'll be running one in dummy form. Yeah, absolutely. How can we view? Can we view? Yeah, what yeah. I'd like to do is I'd like to show you can, perhaps next week. Can Kelvin have a monitor in his office so he can uh, <laughs> monitor the staff so yeah. he can interfere? He can have a little line. He can be down on the whatever it's. Sort of nice. Interactive. interactive. And a button. I don't want him to be interactive. You can have a one-way link down. <laughs> um, and on Saturday nights we do have gay news and we have recordings. <laughs> so I'll run out. Perhaps I should share that to Kelvin later. <laughs> Is this with your, your, your gay chef? Well, we have the homo who's the no-no of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the most popular things we've done so far. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nick Ferrari said yesterday, gay news is in one big chunk and I think it should be in small bites. <laughs> Meanwhile, upstairs, the Windsor Horse Show is in the corner of the studio. A large part of live TV's output will be from live outside events but their special outside broadcast trucks haven't arrived yet. Well done, everybody. Well done. Excellent Tony Austin, the studio director, will be responsible for the control gallery, the nerve centre for both the studio and the outside broadcasts. But you do, of Nick Ferrari oversees the first day's content. The first time we ever had uh, a live cross on live television to a very startled woman at Lakeside in Essex, it was, it was very, very good. That just got better and better as we went on. It's our first day down here, uh, and it had a very, very good feel. It started maybe a little um, Richard and Judy, but that's something we can work at, but really take great, great heart from it all, because as it went on and on, it started to get better, and I think Tony and I probably felt that by the third hour, or even the fourth hour, that would have actually started to really hit the mark. Absolutely delighted. I was I meant to say about movement and body language. You did all that. You said all that, and I, I disagree. And, I mean, it was unfortunate it we lost Essex very early on, so that it loaded more on Alison, who was supposedly at Windsor, and more here. <laughs> but 
Hey, it's a month to go, so it was great. Live TV is television like it's never been done before. We'll take you right into the heart of our custom-built operation and give viewers the chance to call the shots. Although there are technical problems in the new studio, rehearsals are going well. Janet calls a press conference. Well, Janet, that's is the Is there type. one particularly good reason why people should tune into live? Well, I, the, in the evenings, terrestrial television doesn't cover openings and parties and play theatre openings or premieres or anything like that. We've got a very simple ethos, which is if it's live, we're at it. So I think if there's one reason, it's you're at the parties you weren't invited to. <laughs> Janet, how does it compare to working with BBC? It's a lot more fun. Um, contrary to that crap you read in the Sunday Times, uh, David Kelvin and I are all extremely uh, good friends, and it's a lot of fun. You want to start a bidding war, Kelvin? I know, I know, I know, I know we couldn't compete with Sky, they're making five million a week. The best that could happen is that it's a huge success with the audience, and every major brand in the country is going to be beating a path to our door. The worst that could happen is, is a complete clinker that nobody in their right mind would turn it on and that uh, we have to uh, reassess, reevaluate, and all those other words beginning with re, which uh, probably also includes the words rehire. I mean, you're standing here in Canary Wharf. I've gone out of my way to create the most high tech studio in Europe that doesn't look like a bloody television studio. I spent the last 20 years of my career working in television studios, and I can just tell you they're redundant. I, ha I can't hide my disappointment. I can't hide it, to be completely honest. I was expecting to come here and find Janet firing on all cylinders and, and doing what she did at Network 7. But like anything else, when you think back to the past, you always think of the good times and those moments when Janet came up with brilliant ideas in the gallery and screamed and shouted. She's grown up, I've grown up, we've all grown up. She's not taking as much part as she did then, and I don't expect her to. But I was surprised and, and disappointed, got a bit. Oh, God! I have to sit up there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I believe in people getting on with it and setting up their own systems. And if I interfered, they'd never set those systems up. And it's not that I'm hands off, it's that they have to create the systems and the organisation that they're comfortable working with rather than me impose what I want on them. But it isn't my job to get involved in, you know, what we're making a feature about. It is my job to be very involved in the branding of the channel, the music, the graphics, the presentational style, the architecture, the look of the channel, that's totally only my responsibility. So, Steve, are you ready to rehearse the opening? With time running out, full rehearsals are throwing up some major difficulties. Not clear, and I said, well, it's the same bloody stuff as And the television people are finding it increasingly tough in the world of newspaper finances. What we need is we need more people. <laughs> you know. Oh, right. It's all very well. I understand this thing about headcounts that newspapers have. But in television, you need people. And we haven't got enough people. But, you know, we'll do what we can. It's the Red Army, mate. It's the Red Army. You wonder where they've gone to. Have you seen? When they're not in Bosnia, they're here. What are you doing? What are you doing? She's just logging all the shots. Oh, hard luck. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, then. Somebody has to be a sort of a doctor note figure. You work for any company, people always want more. I mean, creative people are much the same. And uh, they're good fun to be with. And uh, you wouldn't want them guarding the bank, you know? And then you loop, go on, screen. Um, people news and... Go on, keep going. Five minutes to that's all I've got. That's that's all got it's not just the lack of people that's a problem. Yeah. While the editing machines are working well, the software for the revolutionary new computer that is supposed to actually transmit the pictures still has bugs. And although real outside rehearsals have begun, there's a problem here too. British Telecom were given the contract to build the outside broadcast, or OB trucks. But to save money, Live decided to shop around and buy a lot of the truck's equipment themselves. The arrangement is complicated. It's fraught at the moment, very fraught. Um, I mean, we, were, we haven't taken delivery of any of our trucks, and I don't know whether we're going to have any of them when we go to air. Um, BT at the moment aren't very happy, and I've been told they're not going to provide us with the trucks that we thought we had in the interim period. 
So, for example, tonight we're trying to do two OBs with one truck. Even worse, using hired trucks, they have no proper communications. How are you getting off tonight? Oh, hi, I'll get your number later. God, I gotta find Kelly, because um, you're really nice. Because she's, um, she's looking for her things, and she's going out clubbing, and hi, how are you? How's it going? Although they can see what's happening, they can't talk to anyone on location, or even stop them. Luckily, at Topshop, there's an in-store radio station they can telephone. Unfortunately, all their shoppers will be able to hear me queuing in the presenter, um, walking around doing their Friday afternoon shopping. But that's sort of how we're going to rig it up for today. Well, I won't obviously be allowed to swear like I normally do, so I just have to be very polite. Definitely try that on. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, well, you are going to turn heads with that. Okay, well, oh, all right. Often the cable doesn't even stretch as far as the cameras, which hits a raw nerve with live TV. Simon Park for MCR. We are ready to roll the next tape to you. The problem with all these new OBs is to do them live is a bit of a nightmare. So we had to get them to record them and then send them down the line and we played them out recorded, which was a bit of a cod, obviously. It's also a bit of a con, which is what I wanted to say. Um, but we did it and it was an OB. It was an OB, but it was on tape. Um, so it stops no, it being live. It stops it being live. Live TV is on tape for those moments. Stand by three, two, three, with OB. And you done three. Now it's time to see what Two sets of seven down. Now. Three roll. Take it. Basically, BT have you? thrown a complete tantrum and said we can't have trucks. <laughs> they have, honestly. And <laughs> today, no. No. from now on, they've just completely had it. They've also claimed that people in the gallery have been very rude to their engineers and have upset them. Scrabbling around to rent anyway, temporary trucks day by day is proving a nightmare. Ruth wants to stop work. rehearsing just for a few days to get on top of the situation. And, co and confirm trucks that we're going on air with, three trucks, so we've got three trucks to go on launch day with comms, because I'm not happy about going to air without proper communications between the trucks and the gallery. No. And that has got to be sorted before mm. anything else. I think, A, the problem will go away with a friendly phone call, and B, it won't be the same when we launch. Yeah, but there's a second problem when we launch. Gone. Yeah. No trucks when we launch. Right, is that confirmed now? Yeah, and I'm just saying to Janet that I want them not to rehearse next week. I want them to, if there's a truck that is delivered, to go out to Greenwich Park, like send no, live pictures back. No, I want them back. to be on that schedule. Well, that's where we're fighting, because I don't. I want... Well, we can't I go want... to where... I'm sorry. OK. All right, it's all a question of allocating time, because the production coordinator hasn't done OBs before, and I'm going to spend some time with her to do call sheets. No, I'm sorry. Know. Don't even finish that sentence. Well, it's a problem that's going to be solved. No, no, it's too close to air and there's too many other problems. No, get an old production okay. manager in who's done OBs before. You know, all I know is the information's being told to me. It's going out of my office and it's not happening. Call sheets aren't being done on time. Things aren't being sent. The information that I have and the producers have is just not filtering through. From a very practical point of view, it would help if I was closer to you because a lot of stuff is talked about and it's a phone call and you say what's going on and people aren't well, coming round. Okay, well, I'll speak to Jan. But uh, I've got 17 people on four desks. 17 people haven't got desks? No, I've got 17 people on four desks. Mm. And no computers and three phones. My well, office is, is inhabited is. by six people at the moment. It is what it is. So instead of me ever having time. Finally, Janet compromises with Ruth. There will be no OB rehearsals for four days while they concentrate on hiring in trucks and reorganising. The whole high-tech offices where everywhere is a studio have been built in just six months. From nine o'clock tomorrow morning, they should be broadcasting non-stop from here for years. I think, well, I mean, we all think the same. Um, that you know, we've, we've worked really hard, we've done our best. Um, we've got this fantastic state-of-the-art technology, but it just doesn't work. And as a result, um, you know, we can't fall back on the old ways of doing things because, you know, as, as we've been saying over the past weeks, we haven't got that thing that you have in the older days, which is humans. So uh, we, um, we, we're just making endless lists of things that we need to do. Look, I'm a list woman now.
God. You saw me weeks ago with my stickers on the wall. Now look at me, list woman, running water woman. That's right, I think when the but technology um... breaks down, the only thing we can do is to, is to throw old technology at it, quick. Uh, we don't have much of it, but what we have to do, we'll throw it. Even Janet's info bar is not yet online. You've got to finish programming the bloody information zone that goes at the bottom of the screen. That computer that programmed that's only been installed overnight. The excavation mark that's meant to be moving isn't moving because it doesn't look good enough and they're rewriting that program. And um, I've just watched all the graphics back today for about the 25th time and I've decided I don't like the music on one of them. And I can see people looking at me thinking, why she decided now? But it's like, I've, I've just decided it's not right. So the morning block music will have to be changed to something different. People might say, oh, but it's only a cable channel. Well, that's the problem with being a perfectionist. It's a bit like a, an illness, isn't it? Yeah. One minute to air, one minute. It's June the 12th, the moment of truth. Well, this is it, guys, 15 seconds. Good luck, everybody. Live is about to go on air for real. Ten, Ten nine. nine. Eight, seven, six, enjoy. five, four, three, two, one. Air one zero. run. Oh, hey. oh, yeah, yeah. Coming to camera one. Come to studio in ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Here we go. Two, and music and cue. Hey. going to bring you the stars, the gossip, the stories and the views that you care about. The best thing is, we can bring them to you all day long. Indeed, and I'm Donna Bernard and we are broadcasting to you live from the nation's newest and most advanced TV studio right here in the Canary Wharf Tower. Hey. Unique setups, so we're going to show you the inside. Donna, you go that side, I'll take it inside. This is where the producers, the reporters and the searchers work on the latest in computer technology. We are Europe's tallest office block and therefore we have a wonderful view of the west end of London. You can see BT Tower and Tower Bridge. Donna. And this is going to be the Constellation Manager's Quarter into the meeting right now. So we're this tower. Uh, we'll just take a look at the view she has from Canary Wharf Tower. <laughs> Bright colours are in. Just check this out. Fuchsia, purple. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done. Well done. Great stuff. Things go well through the morning, but by the afternoon, cracks appear. First, from an unexpected direction. News time with Julia Bradbury. News time, God, my goodness. A microphone has failed. I can't hear. I can't hear, or sorry. Oh, oh, no, hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hear me now? It's two owners, not one. Um, and Mr. Gardner's estranged wife has vowed to fight for her share of his money, even though they're about, get, about to get divorced. What happened there, chaps? He you knows his radio mic again, wasn't he? That was the first cup cup. What a shame. God's sake. The, the problem is, we've only got two radio mics on that desk. As long as they've got less than two people speaking, you can leave yeah. the news on. Yeah. If you want a third person to speak, you need right. that microphone. So, I mean, I, I don't know how... I mean, how should they proceed, then? What should they do? Well, we need somebody to police it internally. Who should do that, then? Well, really, they need a technical runner to run around with the show and police that. A floor assistant. Mm -hmm. Are we running? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I mean, are we running up the stairs? Oh, I see. <laughs> Not us. We've been running around all day. Have you been, uh, what's it like, sorry? Uh, bits of it. Not enough, unfortunately. I've had something else going on that might prove to be equally exciting. And, uh, what does it feel like having a TV station start? Feels great, I think. I mean, it doesn't, hasn't really dawned on me until now. But it's, uh, I think it's different from a newspaper because it never stops. I see the having people walk past all the time is a bit of fun. Yeah. Where are they like team blocks on? This cupboard. Hi, Nick. Hello, Megan. Well done, are you alright? Yeah, very, no, very where, strong. Where, Thank where, you. where are they actually shooting? They're shooting right down right reception. They've made a set just in front of the reception. Oh, just between right. the Pebble Mill area and reception. Oh. Okay. Now somebody knows what's going on. No, well, they were. They've actually moved it through because they built the brackets. Anyway, is it still going flawlessly? 
Yeah, well, no, Rachel ran down the other end of the room in a complete flap about five minutes ago. She went to the river. I can only assume something's gone wrong. I haven't gone up to find out what. If you like it red hot on live, then you're going to love our next guest. Yes, she is super talented. She, she's put the spice into classical music. Um, the, uh, can I help the, the, the Abbott just crashed with all the graphics on it, so we didn't have any strings or promos. Oh, so we had to run down to press to get the tape, because they'd had a panic earlier, because they didn't have the tape, because, you know, the, the machines aren't quite right in there yet. So, um, we'll just go and get it and bring it out. TV's been sort of, uh, almost stripped of that raw energy. Yeah. In its traditional, conventional sense, hasn't it? And, and in a way, the viewers are being exposed for the first time to all the, um, excitement and the rawness of television, and that's the way I think it should be. Okay, what, what we Despite the fraught studio, most viewers would never notice the problems. The first day is judged a success. In the evening, the first of an eternity of live dinner parties begins with invited guests. So why are you worried? You know, it's just that fear of not knowing what's there. That's why nobody's come back and told anybody anything. But that's why people are born victims, or do you think they're victimized? No, I don't think so. No. I think they're creating body guys, but the mind well, goes somewhere else. Yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, he's not in getting up in the morning. Do, do you not think you'll see them again? Aren't you worried about the bereavement? Live on live television. Well, uh, no. Hello, my name's Alan Partridge and I'm live. I'm live. On live TV. Let's go! Income per week is uh, 60, approximately £60,000. And that's made up of uh, about £13,000 worth of advertising and the rest from uh, subscriptions. So obviously, uh, you know, as we're spending £300,000 a week, there's a bit of a difference. Uh, but, you know, that, that is on plan and we, you know, we understand that, we're tracking that. By midsummer, although they're meeting their financial projections, the new technology isn't sorted. The OB trucks still haven't arrived. And Live are still trying to sort out something with BT and their outside subcontractors. And the channel itself is receiving a mixed reception from critics, advertisers, and audience. There's a feeling there aren't enough real celebrities, and the interviewing could be more in depth. Five million pounds. Although he paid a million pounds. Yeah, but in, in the United States, they put this stuff out at seven o'clock at night, and, 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 and it's popular. And it's... Our sense is that uh, it could do better. Although we aren't at the bottom of the pile of uh, cable operators, we're too far down the league for comfort, and we want to get more people simply watching us. Mm. The technical facilities we can re review at that point as well. I mean, what I'm trying to do at well, the moment... Well, work, so well, that'll be a joke. Janet, we'll be reviewing them when they work. Do, Janet, there's only one or two things that... Well, the yeah, average doesn't work, British Telecom's fucked up, and the info bar isn't working. If David rings me one more time about why it's not working, I think I'll throw the phone out the fucking window. So, I mean, a lot I want of... people to, like, finish a yeah. job instead of telling me that, you know, it's in the pipeline. The problem is, Janet, we are using a lot of new technology, yeah? Yeah, the fact I doesn't know, don't know anything about it doesn't make any difference. I just want it to work. No, I, I can't I, give a fuck about I don't how it works. About it I just too. want it to work. It's not necessary to know how it works. No. It impedes you. If you sure, know but it the works. problem is, is, if we had gone old star technology, we'd have, one wouldn't have the money to do the things, and two probably couldn't. Yeah, have but well. I want the fucking. He told me that an exclamation mark yeah. would animate in the corner of the screen. Sure. He promised me it would, and it still doesn't. It sits there looking like big, ugly, and horrible, and okay. I just want it to work. All right. Well, they are working. So if he's away for a whole fucking week, how's it going to be working sure, next but week? What do you want? Do you want the average system to work? Or to the well, I want him to put, tell me what he's doing to make it work. We've so that when he's away, I think right. progress is being made, not, not okay. made because he's not here. Right. Um, well, you know, he's not very good at delegating or, or mm -hmm. informing people what no, he's doing. No, he's... And take him off the fucking internet. I have, I have, I have. I spent my whole day looking at who's going on holiday and oh, how to replace people sure, leaving. What creative input have I got into this channel at the moment? Naught. But at the moment, Janet, we have to get the base business working right, and that means doing those boring, turgid yeah. things, yeah? It's not. It's, it's well, not my job to sit and go through the staff room. It's time to face the Mirror TV executives again. First on the agenda, the whole cable business is not growing as fast as expected. Am I right in thinking that our subscriptions then have gone down since last week is that is that what you're telling us and overall <laughs> our predictions for august have gone down our yes. predictions have gone down yeah why yeah. is that because of churn or yeah churn and some some people are going backwards but i thought cable were doing better on connections and satellite at the moment 
The discussion moves on to programming. I think it's still fragmented to the point that it depends on who the interviewer is. Um, it depends on lots of things which are left to the individual rather than dictated by the, um, the program style book. I still think that's missing from it somehow. Um, well, they have a bloody staff, but they don't abide by it. I mean, well, let's be realistic, I... they've done all it. We told them everything you've said. And... But I come back to it, a lot of it depends on journalistic expertise and quality of the people who are Well, who if are they haven't there. got it, they've got to be changed, haven't they? You've got to be a ruthless about it, and I have to or, say... Or trend, you know. Yeah. Janet, it concerns me that between 7.30 and 9, which is a certain time for our audience, mm. that we're actually putting out a programme which I think alienates most people above the age of 18. Well, that What do you think about the visual effect? Is that, is that there to stay? I see it, mate. It's not changing. Because that, that's, that's one of the things that... Oh, the, it was the content that I did, was the... Well, look, you're over they, 25. Yeah. You're not going to lie. <laughs> so don't I'm not over 25. Well, all well, right, so... Well, I think it's fine. I think it does its job in the afternoon. When will the famous trucks arrive? Uh, Richard and I can't see BT after this meeting, actually. Um, our guys went up there um, on Tuesday for testing, exception delivery, and everything was going to be hunky-dory. Two of the dishes were still on the, in the workshop. Um, they had um, installed the audio jack fridge upside down, put the wiring in back to front. Um, <laughs> so we were saying it was somewhat incompetent. Can we work with a company that can't even build a van? And this, well, they, they, this they, is they, so they, horrid. They I know they subcontracted sure. the building of the van, but the whole thing depends on how mm -hmm. they maintain the crewing uh, and all of that. We, we haven't accepted the Avid stuff yet. Or, or the Sony. Or the Sony stuff. Or the BT. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's about two and a half million quid with the kit. Right. Okay. Um, so although we're, it's in use, it's not actually working as we would like it, so we haven't accepted it. Right. Any other useful suggestions? Okay, thank you. Well, I've got no interest in that meeting this morning. It's just something I have to sit there and sit through. I feel depressed. I feel really depressed about it. I feel I hate it when things don't work. Don't you feel... No, I'm a perfectionist. It's got to work. I was sold this fucking technology. It's got to work. Look, it's still got that crap on the bottom that I've banned. Because it's bollocks. It doesn't say anything. They're supposed to be programming. Well, I don't get much feeling of gratitude from the 20th floor, do you? I mean, you go into it knowing there's going to be so many years before you go into profit anyway. And in the end, your revenue can only be driven by advertising and cable subscriptions. So all I can do is make... Uh, a channel looks as good as possible, and I hope that people out there are flogging it. The OB trucks finally arrive, but it's a day too late for Janet. Janet has resigned, and we have... Uh, well, hold on a second. While she was away on holiday, Kelvin muscled in and signed a deal for Rugby League on live. It was the last straw for Janet. A new career for Kelvin. I felt it was uh, talking down to the viewer, and I felt that uh, it was insulting their intelligence, frankly. So why didn't you do something about it sooner? Well, 12 weeks is quick enough, you know. Yeah. I, mean, how, I mean, it would look unseemly if you acted any faster, I suspect. I imagine some of the staff will change, as you would expect. Uh, we want to bring in perhaps some more sort of seasoned veterans into it to make not quite traditional programming, but something that people can more readily understand and buy into. This is um, this is uh, Chateau. Uh, Chateau Porter. Anyway, where you work from is of absolutely no account. It's actually what you do that matters. So. And what are you going to do? Well, we're going to make changes anyway, and um, and uh, embrace the viewer a little more. 
Huh, now, I've got some People News coming up, so please stay tuned for this. I'm not sure what's in it, but I'll have a look and watch it with you. People News, please. Daryl Burton, Rachel Purnell and Ruth Wrigley are now working for other TV companies. When you're a star, it's hard to go unnoticed. Janet has been presenting a Channel 4 show on men. Along with the sport, Kelvin wants to introduce topless darts. And next month, he launches a five-day-a-week soap opera about a female TV executive in her 40s running a TV station on the 24th floor of Canary Wharf. Everything cut to the bone. Okay, bye. 